how to sublimate the inside of a coffee mug. So we have been getting a lot of questions here recently about how can you possibly sublimate the inside? We all know how to sublimate the outside, several different methods, but how do you get the inside? Now we're gonna do a few different tests today. I have never ever tried this and we're going to try it out together. So we have heard that using sand on the inside in a convection oven will help you get this. Now, the one thing that these are gonna have in common is using the sand. But the two methods I'm gonna use is using a Cricut mug press as well as the convection oven. Now, I'm not using a tumbler press because it would be sideways and the sand can fall out and all of that, where the Cricut mug press is straight up so it's gonna hold it, right? So the first thing I actually wanna try is this mug press because if this is a success, that's going to be amazing. But then I also wanna show the convection oven so if it does work, if you don't have a mug press and you do have that, you can still pull it off, right? So we've got our coffee mugs here. You want to make sure that they are sublimation coffee mugs. I'm just using the Cricut brand here. I've got some sand that we just purchased from Lowe's. I'll try to link down below to some that obviously that I can recommend, but grab it locally from your hardware store or wherever you can, honestly. The really cool thing about sand is it will retain that heat. So it will hold some heat. So I do feel like that could help be successful. My one concern about this whole thing is going to be pressure. We all know whenever it comes to sublimation, one of the things that you need is pressure. So that's going to be my only concern. So I've been doing some thinking. So if this does not work 100%, I'm not gonna give up and I'm probably going to order a few different things that we could try to mimic some pressure using the sand. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're using this bundle right here in designbundles.net, the Winter Crafters Bundle, and it is gorgeous. I love the color combos of all of these here. These are great for Christmas projects and they're gonna take you all the way into January because they are winter projects. Great for t-shirts, cards, um, ornaments, throw pillows, you name it. There is so much good stuff in here. But what we have done is thought outside of the box using some of these designs on coffee mugs. So for example, this one right here is actually showing like door hangers as well as these snowman faces right here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this snowman face in the bottom of the coffee mug so it's kind of shocked once you take a drink. He's down in there. We thought it was so, so cute. And then with this one right here that looks like the, um, the like the ugly Christmas sweater, it's round and it's perfect to put down in there. So we're just thinking outside of the box when it comes to these designs. To go along with that sweater, this is that bundle I was telling you about. This is the knitted pattern. So this is perfect, I think, for the ugly sweater. And you could definitely change these. So if you guys are a Gold Plus member, you could definitely take this into Designscape and you could actually change the colors of this. You could really create an ombre. And I believe you could probably even pull that off with Procreate as well. But what I did in Canva was brought in a couple squares behind it because it is transparent where the white is and then just kind of layered that up there. So lots of different things that you can do with that as well as taking it inside a Cricut Design Space. If you wanted to do a print and cut with your um, sublimation printer, you could change those inside of Cricut or Silhouette Studio as well. So as you can see, I just printed all of these off on one sheet over there in Canva so that way I could utilize the space. So just kind of design those all right there. So these are all ready to go. So the very first thing I want to do is actually trim down the excess for the full wrap one. So we're gonna go ahead and just trim all of these down. So there's our first one, we have our full wrap. And then whenever it comes to our round ones here, I'm actually gonna use a pair of scissors to cut all the way around. So here is our cute little snowman for the front of our mug. And then, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and take a pair of scissors and just cut all the way around these. So we just wanna kind of get nice and neat as we can. So that way they're gonna fit nice and perfectly down there. Starting off with the Cricut Mug Press, I'm gonna do the full wrap in this one. So we're gonna do that one as well as the follow along. Let's go and wrap it first and we're gonna get some tape here. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. And we're just gonna go ahead and get this nice and even. So whenever it comes to doing your full wrap, you just wanna make sure this is gonna be nice and tight and that you don't have any gaps all the way around. All right, so now that we have fully wrapped the mug, we're gonna go ahead and just take that design and I'm gonna drop it face down inside of our mug so you guys can see that there. I'm not going to tape it. If you can get yours taped successfully, you may wanna try to do that. Um, my only concern that I have is about the sand kind of getting underneath it. So we're just gonna be nice and slow to get our first set of sand. So I'm just trying to make sure that it's nice and even at the bottom. All right, so for our sand here, I've just used a Tupperware here to hold my sand because it came in a really big bag. 
So I just had my husband put some in a Tupperware for us. And so now I'm just gonna scoop this in. What I'm gonna do is use a little scrap piece of paper here. You could use whatever you have, a measuring scooper or whatever. Um, and then we're just gonna go ahead and very slowly get this in here and then I'll just start to pile it up. I'm hoping by adding as much sand as I can, that's going to add pressure. All right, so now that we have our cup full of sand, it is heavy, so I'm starting to feel a little bit better about the pressure. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this guy right inside, and then we're just going to close it as normal. So hopefully there's no hiccups with the Cricut um, mug press, because you guys know we've tried before, if you try to put in something that doesn't belong in there, sometimes it stops it and we have to re-go. So I'm hoping the weight of that does not get thrown off, so we'll see what happens. Just to update you, halfway through, we are on our third light, and so far, so good. We haven't had any hiccups with the Cricut mug press. All right, so our Cricut mug press is beeping, so it's good to go. We're gonna pop it open, and we're about to find out. So you guys let me know in the comments below, do you think that this was a success? I'm very, very curious. I'm very curious if any of the sand got underneath there. Lots and lots of questions. I was going to dump the sand directly from here straight into my next one, um, but because I've got to get everything still on there and all of that, I'm gonna go ahead and just dump it in here. So we're gonna go ahead, get our bug out just like this. Let's go ahead and let that sit for one more second. It's not gonna hurt it. And let's go ahead and tape up our next one so I can transfer this directly to the other one. Just because it's already got the heat going, I kinda wanna retain that. But then again, do you think that's gonna mess up our tests? I don't know, we're just gonna roll with it. I think it'll be fine. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. We're going to first tape on the outside design here. So for the convection oven one, we are going to be using sublish shrink. So that is what we're going to use to give the pressure on the outside of the mug for this design. If you are only doing the inside of the mug, you do not need anything on the outside. So if you're just doing the bottom of the inside of this mug, you don't need to do the sublish shrink. There's also these silicone wraps that you can get that have metal clamps. I actually own some, could not find them, uh, but you could also use those. But honestly, I love sublish shrink and I'm gonna show you how to to cut it down to get it to fit on your mug. All right, so I'm just taking a standard piece here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure this guy out just to make sure it's going to fit. Make sure it's gonna kinda go over the top and everything else like that. So we'll go ahead and just start by trimming this guy down. All right, just like that. And then, there's a few ways that people do this, and I'm actually going to completely cut mine all the way open like this all right we're gonna figure out where I need my little slit lines here so I'll do this here so we're gonna get us a cut line on the outside of each handle just like that we're gonna do the same thing to this side all right and then we're also going to make one where it's gonna go on the inside so I'm just gonna do the same thing So this is where it's gonna take lots and lots of tape. So we're gonna go ahead and get this here, get our pieces, see how those are just gonna kinda of go tucked inside of here? All right, and then we're just gonna start taping everything down. So it is a little bit more tedious if you use something like Subla Shrink on a coffee mug. Like I said, lots of different people do it lots of different ways. Um, so definitely feel free to do it however you like best. Now it may be easier for you to get the silicone wrap. Obviously you wouldn't have to go through this and you would use that same silicone wrap over and over again. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, getting ready for the convection oven here, I'm using a heat gun. Now normally, if you guys have ever seen me do tumblers and things like that, if I ever use Subla Shrink, I just lay it into the convection oven and it will automatically shrink around you. You don't need to do that. But because I wanna stand my mug straight up, I need to shrink this. So I've made sure and really tape this to where anything is opening is closed. So like I said, it looks a little wonky, but it's gonna be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to shrink around the bottom. 
All right, so now that I have the bottom, I'm gonna set this aside. Let's fill it with that sand, and then we'll finish uh, shrinking that up. But you guys could see how well that worked out. Um, it's a little bit tedious, a little bit funny looking, but it'll be good to go. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and take our next design that's gonna go on the bottom. Make sure that the bottom of these mugs are clean, by the way, guys. You definitely want to do that. Make sure that they're completely clean before you get going, as well as the outside, just as usual. Okay, so what we're gonna do, now that that's in there, once again, we're gonna take the sand from this one, and I'm gonna pour it straight in here. Obviously, if you were only using a convection oven, just take the sand just like we did before. All right, so let's go ahead and get this one going. All right, we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to preheat this oven. We're gonna do 400 degrees between 12 to 15 minutes. So when you do sublimate in a convection oven like that, it does take a little bit, so keep that in mind. While that's preheating, let's go ahead and take a peek on our Cricut mug here. So we are going to find out the moment of truth if this one worked with the Cricut mug press. Now, if it didn't work with the Cricut mug press, that doesn't mean it's not gonna work with the convection oven because that is a longer time. So here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and get this out of here and it was not successful. So hopefully you guys can see that there. It was definitely a fail. In the meantime, let's go ahead and peel off the outside here and just check out our wrap. All right, there we have it, so cute. Just to test out another theory is, what if we've already sublimated the coffee mug and we decide we wanna go ahead and do the bottom of this? I'm not gonna wrap this with anything. My heart tells me I wanna wrap it with another piece of uh, at least coffee paper, parchment paper, something like that, but I'm not going to. We're gonna drop the same design back down here in the bottom and we're gonna fill it with sand once again. All right, so we've got it again. So once this is preheated, I'm gonna go ahead and put both of these in the oven for 15 minutes. All right, so now that our oven has beeped, it is ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and open the door and get it right inside. Just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that timer for 15 minutes and we'll be right back. We have 15 seconds on the clock, so I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to pull these out. We're gonna dump out the sand and we're gonna find out if it worked. Using my gloves, I'm also gonna use a hand towel here because these are quite hot. We're gonna start with the first one. We're gonna go ahead and dump it. Nothing, there is still nothing, so I really don't have good hope for this one. So let's go ahead and pull it out. I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors here and start to remove that supple shrink. All right, I've got that pulled back enough to where I can get my sand out. And so now we're gonna completely remove that supple shrink. All right, so before we pull out that middle, we're gonna go ahead and remove this piece just to show you. All right, so you can see we do have a successful sublimation on the outside, so let's find out about the inside. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my weeding tool down in here, and let's see. And no, it was a complete fail. So you guys can see down in there, there's absolutely nothing. As you guys can see, that was a complete fail, not only with a Cricut mug press, as well as the convection oven. I am super bummed because I really had high hopes for this one. And I honestly thought it could possibly be successful, um, as well as at least in the convection oven, honestly, because of that 15 minutes. I did feel like there was some weight to the sand, but this is the problem that I see. Number one, the sand does work as in holding that heat. I did feel it and it definitely was at 400 degrees. The problem is pressure. So whenever you guys are sublimating, if you're new to sublimation or if you know sublimation, you need pressure. So not only do you need at least usually around 385 to 400 degrees, some of them you can get lower temps, but it's higher time. It always has that pressure. So that's our problem here. Now here at Design Bundles, we love to test things like this for you. When we get a lot of requests, we go ahead and we put it to the test for you guys because we want you to save your money. I don't want you going out purchasing, you know, $20, $30 worth of sand and then it's unsuccessful or going out and purchasing a convection oven because you think that's going to be successful. So we definitely love testing this for you guys so you guys can save the funds and we honestly enjoy it. So it's really neat to kind of see the process and, and put it to the test. I really also love doing it 
it's not that I'm live, but I'm here with you guys testing it for the first time so you guys can see exactly what I'm going through and how it's happening. So like I said, this was a complete bust, but you guys let me know in the comments below. Have you tried this? Was it a success for you? What do you think the problem was? What do you think that I could have done different to possibly make this a success? Or what do you think we could add in to make it successful? Please let me know in the comments below. And like I said, if you had any success or you've tried this and it failed, please give us your stories down below or if you have any other things that you want us to try out let us know because we love testing stuff out like i told you so i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did please hit the like button down below and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one